Hello, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design, and uh, this live stream is a continuation of a drawing I started yesterday. Alright, let's see if I can get all this stuff in order, quit screwing around. Um, hey, Bowdy Hoax, how you doing, Evan? Good seeing you. Uh, this is a drawing of a character called uh, Bombshell, and she's created by the creator uh, J. Ishiro Finney, and I drew this for Drawn and Quartered, the fan edition, uh, which is a weekly competition for uh, fan artists uh, to uh, draw various subjects, usually superhero related, and uh, we have two hours to draw. Hey, that animated one, how you doing? Good seeing you. Um... And so we drew his character, Bombshell. This is how far I got. We had into two hours, and uh, I just wanted to finish it today and uh, finally get it completed. So, um, Drawn and Quartered is on Chester Busby's channel every Thursday at 10 p.m. So if you haven't already, you should go over there and subscribe to Chester Busby's channel. And he has, uh, I think, pretty much daily content uh, on comic related news and information and I think on Sundays he and his uh, cohorts uh, discuss um, conspiracy theories like aliens and Bigfoot and stuff like that so um, yeah so check out Chester, Busby cha Chester Busby's channel and uh, you'll be able to see um, stuff like Drawn and Quartered every week it's pretty cool a lot of fun if you do it um, yeah everyone says that she looks like Bridget Nielsen yeah she does kind of um, but I think the character's supposed to be eh, maybe a little more attractive than Bridget Nielsen. At least, she's probably supposed to be Bridget Nielsen in the mid-80s. So, um, when she was in her prime. Uh, so, hey, Lady Celtic Moon, good seeing you. So, I'm just going to get started. And, uh, yeah. You guys have any questions or anything or whatnot, just pipe up and I'll be here. Drawn. Um, some of you who, who watched this last night may notice that this version that I'm drawing looks a little different than uh, some of the other versions that were drawn. It's mainly because um, I think the other people were drawing the most recent version of this character. And the reference that I found was an older design for her costume. So uh, she doesn't look exactly the same, but she looks, eh, she looks... 75% the same, so I think just some of the details in our costume are, are a little different, so, ha, 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 subscriber says, who's Bridget Nielsen? Yes, Lady Celtic Moon, please share, like, and help the channel. Um, yeah, if you haven't already, please share this out, please hit the thumbs up, and, uh, subscribe to my channel. I, I've noticed that some people have not been getting notifications for various channels, so, uh, the, the best way to, for, for, for me to get the word out is for you guys to share this video out to people um, because YouTube is not exactly being diligent about notifying people when, um, when people start live streaming or when people post videos. I mean, you hit the, you hit the bell for notifications, it's, uh, it's a toss-up whether or not you'll actually get the notification. So please uh, tweet this out. Um, post it on Facebook and let people know because that's that's the the only guaranteed way that people will know that that uh, that I or anyone else is live streaming. Uh, depending on YouTube is uh, you know you're sort of uh, rolling the dice. And I'd rather not do it. Um, Lady Celtic Moon says I did get notification. Oh, very cool, awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, Evan Von Scarver says does she know martial arts? Um, well, she I think she she was trained in martial arts when she was younger, but um, but I think with the character, I'm not that familiar with it with her. But I think the character mainly relies on her strength. She's she's super humanly strong. So I mean, when you're when you're strong enough to toss cars around, you probably don't need that much that much martial arts knowledge. You just sort of punch someone and they go down. So <laughs> hey, Razmas is here. How you doing? Oh, Razmas got a notification. Awesome. Glad to hear. Her. Thank you. Was she married to Steven Seagal? I don't think so because I think she probably would have punched Steven Seagal through a wall. Um, 
<laughs> anyway, I'm going to start drawing and see if I can't actually complete it. <laughs> Steven Seagal, her father? No. I seriously doubt that. Hey, that animated one. Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing? I know your YouTube channel is going very well. Glad to see it. I have a question, that animated one. How come you don't, um, how come you only have silent live streams? I, mean, I kind of, I can kind of guess why. It's kind of distracting to talk and, uh, and do whatever you're doing at the same time, so that's probably the answer. Um, Lady Cusco Moon says, uh, asked me, what is the rate of doing stuff like this? Rate of what? The rate of speed? How long does it take me? Or are you talking about, like, price rate? A price rate for something like this would be, like, 125 for a, um, an inked full-body illustration like this. It'd be $125 U.S. <laughs> Okay, price. Yeah, yeah. Th that 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 would be my price, but the price just varies from from artist to artist. So, oh, your mic's broke. Okay, no, nah, I understand. My <laughs> my mic is in my headphones. Um, when I'm when I'm doing stuff on my computer. Um, otherwise I just use my phone here, and uh, and that's my mic, my phone. Are you adding Steven Seagal to the piece? No, I'm not. <laughs> but if you want, you can buy the Steven Seagal drawing I did yesterday. That's available if you want it. <laughs> Lady Celtic Moon has joined and followed that animated one. Cool. Awesome. trying to get the light right so it doesn't move. Oh, Steve Seagal in the description. I didn't even clean that up. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, thanks, Evan. You should have said that to begin with, because I, I didn't understand what you were talking about. Um, hold on.
in the mouth the whole time. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. I appreciate it. Says it lifts some feet around. Bush won't feel intimidated. Ah, I see. I understand. I understand that, but generally, I'm sort of like a big dumb uh, hound dog. You have to make things perfectly clear to me. Because I'm kind of like, uh, why does he keep asking about Steven Seagal? <laughs> I don't understand. Hey, Andrew J, how you doing? Good seeing you. Oh, glad you like the artwork. Thanks. All right. All right, let's see. Um, Andrew J says, are you going to auction that? Uh, am I going to auction it? Well, I don't auction it. I don't, the only way I would auction it is if, it, if I, if I were in the Friday night auctions and I'm, I don't, I won't have an opportunity to be, to be on that, um, next week because I, I'm not going to be on the pro edition. So. The only time I'd, I'd be able to auction this would be in the next, you know, the next time I win the fan edition and then end up on a pro edition. Who knows when that'll be? Well, I'll probably end up doing with this. I'll probably just sell it for a flat price, like fifty-five dollars. No, wait, fifty-five? No. Um, this 
Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll sell, I'll sell for sixty-five dollars when I'm done. Um, so yeah. Um, Andrew J says, "Sorry, Gemini, for what? I don't know what you're sorry for. You didn't do anything." <laughs> Oh, your T says I need to call Illustration by Design on Hangouts. Yeah, I, I, I got for some reason I got knocked off of uh, Hangouts yesterday on uh, Drawn and Quartered, right in the middle of it, and um, I tried to get back on, and I kept on calling ERT by accident um, because he he was on a previous live stream that I was on, and um, I kept on I hit his his Hangouts instead, and I ended up calling him on his cell phone. So, sorry about that, ERTs. He's probably, like, sleeping or something. <laughs> it's like, who keeps calling me in the middle of the night? It's like, I'm sorry, I didn't know. $70 confirmed. <laughs> I spelled your handle wrong. Well, um, yeah, Andrew J, if you, if you want to buy it, um, you know, like, like I said, when, when I'm done, I will, uh, I'll, I'll post it, I'll post it on, uh, I'll post it on Twitter, and then, you know, first come, first serve. I think that'd probably be the fairest thing to do. So, um, so don't, don't pay me or anything until I post it on Twitter, because not for sale until then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ortiz. Thanks, thanks, thanks for not hating me. <laughs> you broadcasted the call? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> You'll pay with Bitcoin? Oh no. I, I, I only take cash right now, so... <laughs> Only take actual actual currency. Um, cryptocurrency is uh, is too cryptic for me right now, so I'll need actual actual uh, coinage. Hey, Dark Knight Returns, how you doing? Yes, yes, please like and share. Thank you, Lady Celtic Moon. I'm just trying to work out the shadows right now on her ha hand because her gloves are are black. I want to have I want to show some dimension on them. All right, that's good. That's good. Um. Was it a Rick Piper worthy pun? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the pun was. Like I said, I'm slow. <laughs> I might have missed the pun. Uh, I'm doing well, uh, Nighthawk. Sorry, Dark Knight. Nighthawk. Nighthawk. Dark Knight. Ugh. Brain. Ugh. I really am not good at thinking and drawing at the same time.
I shall call you Nighthawk, then. Hmm. All right, let me let me give this a think first before I start start doing things I'm going to regret. All right, that's that should be good. Do traditional drawing like this and have someone right now I um because I am I'm live streaming with my cell phone. I don't I don't know of a way to do that. Buffering? This stream buffering? Um, so, but thank you for telling me going, but, yeah, I, ah, the stream going as long, long as possible, um, without it completely disintegrating. I'm going to try something in a few minutes. Um, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe... Hmm, I'll try something. Hopefully it'll help the stream. Okay. Uh, Lady Celtic Moose says, love the music on this. Oh, good. This is Glenn Miller. An oldie but a goodie. Andrew J says, is there an Indiegogo for Bombshell? 
not yet. Um, I think uh, the author, Jay Ishiro, is looking for an artist. So once he gets an artist, then they'll start production, I believe, in the beginning of uh, 2020, after which point they'll start an Indiegogo. Hey, Pixel Traders here. Awesome. Hey Kevin Bush, how you doing? Good seeing you. I'm hoping Kevin subscribed to my channel. I'm not sure though. If he hasn't, he should. <laughs> I'm trying to get some more of my more of my Facebook friends to actually subscribe to my channel. But I think like uh maybe like ten of them have. <laughs> Oh, he did a long time ago. Okay. Kevin's one of the ten. <laughs> Andrew J says, I love clean lines and round spheres. Mm, yes. Oh yeah, Kevin. Uh, no, uh, no, no, no cursing in in the chat, if you please. My mom might be watching, so. <laughs> We've almost hit a ten thousand views. Great, Scott. <laughs> that animated one is killing it on YouTube.
what are the requirements for partnership? I don't know what partnership means, Evan. Uh, if you're talking to me, um, Dark Knight Returns says uh, you should be the uh, artist on Bombshell. Uh, <laughs> thanks. I I don't know if I um if, if I'm the best qualified though. So um, I wouldn't mind, but I think I need to improve my uh, my skills. Uh, in particular, my speed. So and draw. I, I, I think I mentioned last night, um, I don't even know if you guys heard me because I, I know it was cut off um, in the live stream, but um, drawing a pinup like this is a lot different than drawing an actual comic book. You have to, your skills have to be a lot, a lot stronger um, than simply being a pinup, you know, sort of pinup artist or you know, even a cover artist. You have to be able to tell a story over the course of a, uh, several pages and uh, consistently from month to month or you know however, however long the the book's going on for so it's uh I mean I can, I've done it before I can I can do it but it's just uh, I don't know I need to I need to keep working on it <laughs> let's put it that way Wow. <laughs> Darn tootin'. Let's see. The anime one says you you're almost at 350 subs. Uh, yeah, I think I have 348. So uh, yeah, let let people know. See if I can get to 350 today. That'd be cool. Um, I just need two more subs to get to 350 subs, and I have about eh, what 200 subs before I reach that animated one, who has probably has like 600 subs by now. But uh, yeah, if you could help me get to 350 subs. Maybe I should have a marathon and just keep streaming until I reach 350. I'll end up being uh, awake for a week. <laughs> ah, that anime, that anime one is only at 485 right now. Dang. I remember the good old days a month ago when you were below me.
Nighthawk Walker Warrior says that he's currently at 252 subs. That's good. Kevin Bush says, what are you listening to, 20 Swing? Close. I'm listening to Electro Swing, which is basically 1920s, 30s, and 40s music put to an electric uh, contemporary uh, beat. So, sort of remixing of, uh, of classic uh, 30s and 40s swing. It's called Electro Swing. Kevin Bush says, very cool. Yeah, it is cool. I don't, I, for some reason, I really like it. It's very, um, I like the beat. I find it very relaxing, soothing to listen to. Um, Evan Von Scriber says, what do you listen to when you're not worried about copyright strikes? <laughs> Pretty much anything. Well, not anything. Um, I listen to a lot of Enya, <laughs> which is kind of, I, I like Enya. So I listen to a lot of Enya, a lot of, I mean, a lot of sort of the sim similar music, but by sort of known artists. Um, I guess you might call it kind of retro. Um, I like Leon Redbone. Um... I, you know, I like a lot of 80s music, um, so it varies. I, I generally don't like country at all, um, don't listen to rap, um, but uh, easy listening and pop mainly is what I listen to, um, Sade, you know, stuff that, stuff that you probably find like corny or boring. Um, I like ABBA, Queen, um, I mean, a lot, just, a, just generally the music that I, that I heard when I was, when I was younger, <laughs> that I grew up with, so, I've, I t I've tended to sort of stick with that music. Um, Dark Knight Return says, I wish I had a thousand subs to do live streams using my mobile devices. Well, um, Dark, uh, Nighthawk, I don't, I don't have a thousand subs, but I'm using my mobile device right now. I'm using a, a, an app called, um, Streamlabs. That's stream, like live stream, labs, like a computer lab. Um, so, go on to, um, I think it's, uh, Google, uh, the Google, uh, App Store or the, uh, I guess the uh, the Apple Store, and look up Streamlabs, and that will allow you to live stream and send it to YouTube, like I'm doing right now, when you have under a thousand subs, 
and I, I, I found this out um, from another YouTuber um, right after uh, YouTube changed the rules this past spring because a lot of people were stuck because of it. So Streamlabs is a way to get around it. Hey, John Dillers here. How you doing? Yeah, I already fixed that, John Dillard. I, I'm, not, I'm not drawing Steven Seagal, so. Keep moving the goalposts with YouTube. It's like uh, it's like they don't want people to be successful. Every time, uh, every time people sort of get the hang of uh, how to uh, how to work YouTube and uh, and work with this algorithm, YouTube just uh, changes things around to screw with people. And they're they're they're, they're almost begging for people to uh, jump ship once a viable competitor comes along. Right now, YouTube has been fortunate, and uh, there hasn't really been a big, uh, a big enough contender to uh, to take uh, YouTube's um, users away from it. But once one, some other competitor offers the, the, the this sort of like Facebook. What's going on? Is this uh, Evan saying F F? Um, is there something going on with the stream? Will I draw Katie Siegel? Uh, Katie Siegel. Sure, I'll draw her. She's cool. I like her. Of course, I, 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 I watch her mainly as Leela on uh, Futurama, but uh, <laughs> I was never really a fan of uh, Married with Children, but uh, I like her. She, I think she's, she's very, she's, she's an interesting person. Camera out of focus. Um, Kevin, check your um, YouTube. Sometimes readjusts the uh, the uh, settings on your resolution for your for the stream. So just check and make sure that the resolution is is still set for uh, 720p. Santa Raven, hey, how you doing? Yeah, no, she's on Sons of Anarchy as well. But I don't watch Sons of Anarchy either. So um, the only only thing I've really watched her in has been uh, Futurama. Cool. Glad it worked. Yeah, that happens to me all the time. I'll be watching something and all of a sudden it goes out of focus and then I'm wondering, it's like, what happened? And then I look down and, and YouTube has reduced the resolution down to like 144p. And again, they're screwing with me without me asking them to. So, it is annoying. <laughs> The animated one says, hopefully you'll hit 350 soon. I hope so. Yeah, I'll turn the music down. Sorry about that. I apologize. <laughs> it's hard for me to tell sometimes. Probably when I start screaming, it's too loud. But yeah, just let me know if, if uh, something's... Something like that is uh, getting too much. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's too loud. It's like my parents all over again. Turn down the music. Trace says, if it's too loud, you're too old. Eh, eh, eh. Well, I, I'm guessing we're all pr pretty much all close to the same age, so it might be might be that I'm going deaf. That's why it's so loud. That could be it. 
Yeah, it might just be that that song. I mean, the songs vary in terms of volume, so um, they may have just uh, upped the volume for that song. Let's see. Evan Voskriver says, I'm 50. Eh? And like I said, we're all pretty much the same age, so we're close to it. But super loud old people music. Yeah, and... <laughs> old, people, old, old people music is, a, is probably some of the best music around, so... You gotta respect your elders. Raven, Red, Raven Radio is a great place to listen to music. I'm not familiar with that. What is Raven Radio? <laughs> the anime one says, I'm young, wearing sunglasses. <laughs> now, don't worry, pretty soon people will be, you know, people will be telling you to turn the music down as well. Turn down that, 19, that uh, 2019 music. It's too loud. Turn down that, that old people music. It's the 22nd century. Turn that garbage down. <laughs> <laughs> is, oh, this is another Cult of Raven thing? That might be why I'm not familiar with it. Pretty soon, Pope Fire is going to be asking me to listen to, uh, to Starfire Radio. <laughs> join him. I'm Benjamin but Benjamin buttoning and join us <laughs> yeah it was a stink if you were Benjamin button and you were just getting younger and younger I mean it'd be fun for like the first like I don't know I say the first 50 years you know until you hit your 20s uh, until you hit your your uh, your mid-teens and it starts stinking because then everything would just get worse from that point on. The anime one says, I'm, I updated my banner. What do you think of it? I haven't seen it yet, but I will check it out when I have a chance. <laughs> Starfire has no radio. <laughs> Man, there are 10 people here. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for, for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Um... If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the bell for notifications of uh, future videos. And give the video, uh, this live stream, a thumbs up. I have, I have, I'm, I have a sneaking suspicion that that the um, the buxom woman in my uh, in my thumbnail is what has brought in so many people. <laughs> so I might have to I might have to use buxom women in all my future thumbnails, no matter what the subject is. So next time I draw Steam Seagal, I'll just uh, uh, I'll post a buxom woman, or I'll, I'll post Stephen with a buxom woman, and that will uh, that will guarantee that people will um, will be more likely to show up to, for my live streams. Oh, thanks! I'm glad you like it. That anime one, I appreciate it. Bully says, I came for the hands. <laughs> That's true. The hands are what draw people in. Ah, the shadow knows, yes. We'll do a radio show with scripts. Awesome. Cool. Contemporary ones, but they've mainly, mainly been on... Uh, I haven't heard a um I haven't I haven't heard a radio show in quite a while. I know they do I think BBC does them for Doctor Who um still. 
But, um, I mean, it's probably something you just have to seek out. They're probably out there, but, um, that'd be cool if they did, uh, radio shows for, like, contemporary novels or something. That'd be interesting. That would be interesting. My connection going off again? Something going happening? Eh, well, uh, I try to fix things. Um, I think, but that's the best I can do. I um, I shut off everything else that was using Wi-Fi. Um, I'm guessing the main problem is the fact that I'm using Wi-Fi rather than. Uh, I guess I need some sort of a direct connection between the uh, my phone and the computer to uh, give it a steady stream hmm John Dillard says the main problem is you're running Streamlabs from a, I don't know what that means, a pinch phone? A pinch phone? Pinch, pinch? Pin, mm, I don't know what that word is. Um, did Doc Savage ever have a radio program? Yeah, he did. I actually have a number of them on uh, on my uh, I, iTunes. Um, they did uh, about, well, not not contemporary ones. They, they did Doc Savage radio shows in the 80s. They did two of them. Um... One was, uh, oh my gosh, I have them both. I can't remember the names of them now. Um, one was um, the, uh, actually, I'll go look. Hold on a second. Yeah, they did two radio shows for Doc Savage in the 1980s. One was uh, Fear K, and the other one was The Thousand-Headed Man. So um, those, are the only two that, those were the only two that I could find. Um, there may have been more. I'm not, I don't think they did any back in the 30s or 40s. I think Doc Savage was, was mainly a, uh, a magazine and, and a comic book back then, so... Pinche, pinche, pinche. Okay, I'm not familiar with that term. Sorry. Hey, Josh Animations is here. Oh, cool. Someone. So, oh, okay, great. Well, thank you very much, that animated one. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that that animated one told you about me, and I appreciate the uh, 
the sub. I'm trying to uh, trying to get to 500, <laughs> um, but right now I'm very close to 350. So uh, the animated one is very kind to uh, to tell you to subscribe to me or ask you to. I appreciate it. How old is Doc Savage in 100? 100 what? <laughs> I'm not sure I understand Lady Celtic Moon. How old is he in... in, in oh, 100... Are you talking about in the Thousand-Headed Man? You'll, you'll have to explain or clarify because I'm, uh, I'm not quite understanding. Spanglish slang. Okay. I've never heard that before, John. But I'm not... I don't speak Spanish or Spanglish, so... Let's see. What's the best way to do this? What's the best way to do this? Doc Savage is property of who? Um, I think uh, the Condé Nash um, publishing company owns the rights to Doc Savage. So, um, I mean, he's been around for mm, close to mm, 90 years, I think. I think he started in 1930. Um, so, yeah, he's, he, I mean, he's been around for close to 90 years. So... But they're still publishing new books with that character. Um, Will uh, Will Murray took over writing the uh, the series back in the uh, I think the late eighties, and uh, and he's been uh, pretty consistent about putting out new books. So you can still get new Doc Savage uh, stories. I have not bought. Well, I mean, I've bought some of the some of the uh, newer books. But I stopped a while back just because I I really wanted to read the um, the classic novels and um, I was I don't know. There's something about for me. It's almost like reading new James Bond novels that weren't written by, um, uh, what's his name, um, <laughs> his name just slipped my mind, James Bond's, uh, uh, Ian Fleming, I mean, I've read them, I've, I've read contemporary James Bond novels, but it's just, there's something about them not being written by the original author that, um, I just, uh, it's hard for me to get into them as, as much. Even if they're good, I mean, I'm just kind of, in the back of my mind. I'm still thinking, it's like, well, this is this is ah, this isn't the original author. I know that's that's probably bad. <laughs> um. Oh no, Lake Celtic movie. He's not in free domain. Doc Savage is definitely not in free domain. He 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 he. They've continued to write books. Um, novels with that character continuously, pretty much since uh, since he has been created, or or books have been being pu new new editions have been published with that character consistently since 1930. So he's not he's not in the public domain or free domain rather. Um, Nighthawk says I can't believe uh, Doc Savage is going to be played by Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Honestly, I don't think he ever will be, um, just because. That rumor's been going around for a long time. Just like people have been talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger playing Doc Savage before that. But they keep, you know, they, they, um, they draw it out. They stall on that stuff for so long that eventually 
it just becomes obvious that these people are never going to play the character. And uh, I think it's the same with The Rock. He's never going to play Doc Savage. I mean, they, they say that just to sort of keep people's interest up. Um, but I, I don't see it happening. And plus, I, I don't I don't think it's a I, I think it's a poor I think it's a poor choice. Um, one because Doc Savage doesn't really work outside of the uh, 1930s setting, and I can't see The Rock being a credible Doc Savage in the 1930s. Um, I mean, p- partly because of you know race you know his race. Um, you know he, he's he's not he's not a he's not a white man, um, and I, I find it hard that that all the stuff that Doc Savage gets away with, The Rock could get away with in nineteen thirties in the nineteen thirties, and and two it's um, he would have to wear a complete wig, like to to simulate Doc Savage's hair. I mean his hair is pretty iconic, and. I, I wouldn't be able to get over seeing a rock in like a really bad wig, or even even if it's a good wig. I mean, everyone would know it's a wig because it's the, it's the rock. Um, I I don't know. It's just um, I think I think it'd be a bad choice. Yeah, uh, Lady Kelton, I am going to put texture on the knee, on the knee um, pads, but like like you said, I'm not finished, so <laughs> I'm still working on it. Um, and and uh, and plus, The Rock, Doc Savage is, is a super genius. The Rock does not give the impression that he's a super genius. You know, I, 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 I would be able to, I would not be able to buy The Rock as, you know, the greatest brain surgeon on a planet, which Doc Savage is supposed to be, unless it was a comedy. And Doc Savage shouldn't be a comedy. I, I don't want them to end up making another uh, Seth Rogen Green Hornet film, um, which ended up being terrible because the Green Hornet is n- is not a co- comedic character. When, when they start taking these iconic characters and trying to make them comedies or 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 just not taking them seriously and trying to play them for laughs, that's when these uh, that's when these uh, properties end up failing. And and Hollywood continues to uh, continues not to learn the lessons of uh, of this. Um, they need they need to do it the way that they did uh, Marvel, um, or the way Marvel did it in uh, in their Phase One um, movies, and I guess Phase Two movies, um, where they they just play the characters straight. I mean, you have a character like Captain America, who who's who's a very patriotic character, but they didn't really play him for laughs. They played him pretty straight, and um, and it worked because when when the when the films treat the treat the characters seriously, um, the audience will treat them seriously as well. It's when it, the problem happens when when the studios start thinking, "Oh, this this character is ridiculous," so we have to we have to make the character look ridiculous as a result. No, that that that's the uh, that is the uh, the studios um, putting their own prejudices. Um, on on the characters, and then destroying the characters as a result. That's what happened with uh, with Batman back in the uh, back in the nineteen nineties. They start playing him for laughs. They they, they decided, uh, you know, we're just gonna make make a copy of the nineteen sixties Batman show, and uh, instead of just treating the character um, with uh, with seriousness, and uh, as a result, they basically killed the character for a decade. Not a decade. How, how long was it? It was probably a good seven years before another Batman movie came out. Um, after Batman and Robin. Because it was so stupid. Um, so. It's. Uh, yeah. They, I, I really, really hope that they. They pick someone. Who will, will be a credible. And serious Doc Savage. I think that's the only way that. The character would work. I mean, if you want humor in in in, in the character, I mean, you, you use his uh, his associates who are humorous, um, but Doc Savage himself should not should not be a um, uh, a laughable character. <laughs> Evan Moskowitz says you're crazy. There's nothing wrong, wrong with Hollywood films after 1989. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it says, so you expect Hollywood to respect the fans and the material? Well, it just depends on who's making a movie. Um, like I said, Marvel did it. Marvel did it with Iron Man. Marvel did it with, with uh, Captain America. Um, they did it with... Uh, mm, uh, more or less, more or less with Thor in the first movie. Um, I mean, they 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 played the characters pretty straight. Um, it was only afterwards, once once Marvel became a success, and uh, and films like, especially when when films like Guardians of the Galaxy um, came out and they, and they they made a lot of money. It was only then that Marvel decided that to to start treating all their characters almost like uh, live action jokes. Or live action cartoon characters, and uh, and going for uh, you know chuckles rather than uh, serious storylines. I mean, I, ideally, to, for me, I wish all the Marvel movies were like The Winter Soldier. Um, I th- even now, even today, I think that that was Marvel's best film. It was, it was their biggest biggest uh, success in terms of uh, the content of the movie. Um, because it was played completely straight, and it was, it was, I loved it from start to finish, it was such a beautiful movie, I mean, finally seeing Captain America running around, kicking people's butts, and, and believably doing it, um, as a super soldier, and doing all the acrobatics, and, and, uh, and shield tricks that he does in the comic books, I mean, that was, that was awesome, I, I wish every Marvel movie were like that. Um, and Iron Man was sort of the same for me as well. I mean, that whole scene where uh, he goes to Afghanistan and he takes out all those terrorists um, and sa- saves those villagers. I mean, I love that. I mean, every every superhero movie should be that should be shown that sort of, uh, um, I guess, given that sort of gravitas. Um, and unfortunately, they're not. I wish they were. <laughs> Evan Roscar says every superhero movie should be Iron Man three. No, they should not. Or, no, they should not. <laughs> Iron Man three was. Uh, oh man, that was that was it was it was hard to watch. It was bad. Iron Man two was hard to watch. At least the second half of it. It started off really good, and then the second half of Iron Man two was just bad. It was oh, it was it was hard to watch. And then you got to movies like uh, Thor Ragnarok, and Thor Ragnarok just made me furious watching it. it was, I was so mad watching that movie in the theaters. It was just like they they they, t- they took a subject matter they took subject matter that was really serious. You know, the death of Thor's father, the destruction of Asgard, the murders of all of his friends, and it's played it completely for for laughs. Um, it was. Uh, I got, I didn't get sick watching it, but it should have made me, it, it, it almost sickened me watching it. I wanted to get my money back. <laughs> Iron Man 3 is the best of the best of the best. Oh, I got 350? Oh, the animated one. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, who has uh, supported me to this point. I want to thank the Academy. I want to thank my mom and my dad and, and, uh, and all my teachers who, uh, who told me that I'd, I'd never make it a 350, and uh, I've showed all of them. I've showed all of them that they're that that that, that they're that they're supportive of me and their and their uh, their belief in me was uh, was justified. So thank you very much. <laughs> Nighthawk Warriors at 252. So uh, yeah, go to Nighthawk Warriors uh, YouTube channel and and check it out and uh, subscribe if you uh, if you like what you see. That MA one says, I thought Thor Ragnarok was one was one of the best Thor movies. Um, I think, you know what? I think it really just depends on the people who like Thor Ragnarok. I don't know. I, I think that comic book fans who grew, who grew up reading Thor, 
are the ones who are probably the most critical of these of of him being treated that way in the movies. I mean, I think I think the people who are fans of Thor from the movies were probably the biggest fans of Thor Ragnarok, but the fans of him from the comic books were the ones who were m- most disappointed with it because Thor Ragnarok was not Thor. It was it, it was like watching a Three Stooges movie, uh, which 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 Thor is not. Um, so, oh, John Dillard says, ah, oh, stop it. Oh, my gosh, John Dillard. Yeah, I can't take John Dillard seriously. Endgame was best. Um, I thought that Infinity War was better than Endgame. Um, oh, okay, Lady Celtic Moon. Thank you all very much for your help. Um, you're at 7, Lady Celtic Moon, with no content? I am going to subscribe to Lady Celtic Moon. Everyone, subscribe to Lady Celtic Moon, because even with no content, she deserves more than 7 subs. So... But uh, Lady Celtic Moon, I uh, we'll see you later. Thank you very much for your help. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, Thor. Yeah, Thor one is greater than Thor two, and Thor three doesn't exist. At Evan. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But um, I I I liked Infinity War more than Endgame, simply because Endgame had a lot of the goofiness in these Marvel movies that I rather not see i mean the whole thing with uh with the dabbing Thor, dabbing hulk with the kids and again you had fat thor you know playing Fortnite and arguing with 12 year olds online and ah uh, oh my gosh it was killing me i was just like stop it stop it and then fat thor stuck around for the whole movie <laughs> it, it made it, it, it it was killing me but uh but it, it was okay. It was okay. I, and I hated Captain Marvel in the movie. I was glad she was only in it for like two scenes, really. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought that um, that Infinity War, though, was, was a very good movie. I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Oh, no! The MA one's leaving. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, lo- I loved Endgame. Come back! <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot, the MA1 lives, lives in, in England, so it's late where he is. But thanks for hanging out. It's probably after midnight there. So, hey, you take care. Spoiler, spoiler for what? You haven't seen Endgame yet. What? It's already out on, on video. It's already out on DVD. Well, I didn't ruin too much. What did I say? Fat Thor? Yeah, that kind of ruins it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Evan. Uh, Pablo Romero R says, is that Stefania Ferrario in the thumbnail? Yes, it is. That's that's the woman that, um, that the creator of this character based her on. So, um... Since everyone was unfamiliar with the character, generally, I figured I, I put a picture of, of uh, Stephanie Ferrario in there to uh, to draw in the, draw in the people <laughs> as a as a magnet, as a thumbnail magnet. <laughs> yeah, she is very hot. So um, yeah, I can see why uh, Jay Ishiro used her as a model for this character. She's extremely Extremely attractive. Made a couple. He's made a couple of drawings of her. Oh, cool! I'd never heard of her before until until yesterday, and now I'm um, I'm happy that I've heard of her. <laughs> yeah, he was met, the 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 creator was mentioning yesterday about. Um, oops, hold on. I think my wife's home. Hold on.
Yeah, my wife was home. I didn't realize it. Now I feel guilty. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know if I did her justice here, though. <laughs> says, what you say? Oh my god. Evan, so you did see Endgame. Oh no, Eagle Eagle didn't see, okay. Okay, Eagle didn't see Endgame. I haven't watched it. Well, you need to watch it, Eagle 43. It does you no good. Buy it. It's on your shelf. Oh my gosh, what? You guys have not seen, End all you people haven't seen Endgame? I'm sorry about the lag. Um, again, I wish there was something I could do about it, but um, I need to, uh, yeah, I need, I need to look into buying it, some sort of cord that will connect my, uh, my phone to my computer to see if that will solve the problem. I don't know if it will, but.
Evan says, I think your internet hates you. That could very well be true. Um, I don't know what's going on. I can't really see. Um, well, I can see my cell phone screen, but I can't see how it's affecting the YouTubes. So, um, I apologize again. Ah, uh, I wish... Meh. Okay, after, after, after the stream is done, I'm going to go on... I'm going to go on Amazon and try to buy some sort of cord to connect my cell phone directly to my, uh, directly to my computer and hope. <laughs> Iron Man goes to the beach. <laughs> Finds the Statue of Liberty destroyed. Yeah, they blew it all up. They blew it all up. Buy a lot of internet. Hmm. Yeah. Internet is expensive, so. Yeah, my internet's pretty good as it is. It's just, uh. I think, I, again, I think it's the, uh, the whole Wi Fi thing. Sam Raven says, awesome drawing. I hope one day you can be as good as Rick. Me too. My, my, my goal is to one day be as good as Rick and hopefully surpass him. But I got to keep, I got to keep practicing. So he's a good artist. <laughs> Find a coupon for our internet. <laughs> you guys are so mean. <laughs> Still working. So far. A little. I don't know. It's Thank you. 
Rick's drawing Looney Tunes. First, you need to surpass that. Actually, I drew Looney Tunes in my first job out of college. I worked for a um, worked for a clothing company that did uh, licensing for uh, for Warner Brothers, and so all of our stuff was like uh, the Looney Tunes characters um, riding skateboards and uh, and wearing grunge outfits. <laughs> it was fun, but yeah, we had to draw a lot of a lot of Bugs Bunny, a lot of Daffy Duck. Eagle forty three says cool. Yeah, it was cool. Actually, the coolest part was all the people, all the people I met, because I'm all I'm still friends with a good number of them. All the people I met at that first job out of college, um, and we I still see them, or at least am in am in communication with them on on a fairly regular basis. So it's uh that that was the best part of the job. the 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 job itself, I I, I call I kind of call it the job from hell. Because even though the people there were the, the the other artists were really cool and and the work was was fun, the boss, the people that ran the place were terrible. Um, they were it was a it was owned by a French Canadian family. It was a family owned business, and they were so mean, so rude to to themselves. I mean, they're always cursing each other out at work, and they they were. Just being being just as mean to the to the employees. I mean, they treated everyone really bad, um, and they had a turnover rate. And I, and I and I kept count because people were fired so frequent fre frequently there. They had a turnover rate of like a person a week, and it wasn't it wasn't a big company. It was a small company. It was probably uh, I don't know. I mean, they, they had less than they, they had fifty people or less working for them. So it wasn't like a huge company. So when someone got fired, I mean, you knew about it, um, and uh, you know, it, it it was either like the some of the artists were fired, or the or the managers were fired. Uh, of course, none of the family members who ran the business were ever fired. Um, but uh, you know, so it was always someone else's fault that things weren't going right, except for the people who actually ran the business. <laughs> So it was a, it was a, it was a tough place. Um, I worked there for eh, about a year and a half, two years, and then I finally got fired. But, um, but you know, I was in, I was in good company, so it didn't bother me that much. <laughs> um, Eagle Forty Three said, "You ever draw Animaniacs?" No, we never drew Animaniacs. We we worked on Warner Brothers, and then. Um, and then later on, they ended up getting con a contract for DC and Marvel. So then we started using Marvel characters, and we started. Uh, we didn't actually draw Marvel characters. What we ended up doing was we had to take the uh, the stock art, like Jim Lee stock art. This is back in the '90s, um, and uh, and uh, Todd McFarlane stock art that uh, that Marvel had. And then, and then, like Jose Luis Garcia Lopez art for DC Comics, and we had to we had to place those on T-shirts and uh, and uh, ties, shorts, things like that. So um, it was a lot less creative on our end with the Marvel and DC stuff because they wanted them to be completely on model with no alterations. So and because Jim Lee's style and and McFarlane's style was so popular. You know, they couldn't have other artists doing it. They had to have the actual art from those from those creators on 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 the on the, on the t-shirts and everything. So that's that's what we did. We basically just transferred and uh, you know blew them up big onto uh, onto t-shirt templates and stuff. And then and then added words. We could add words. We could add designs to them. Um, but the artwork had to had to had to still be recognizable as as those artists. So.
man, there's six people still here. That's cool. Thank you very much, everyone, for hanging out and for uh, sticking around. I really appreciate it. Despite my dodgy internet connection and uh, the poor uh, the poor streaming quality, um, I appreciate you you're sticking around. So what powers does Bombshell have? Um, according to the to Jay Shiro uh, Finney, the the creator, uh, she has standard uh, you know superhero powers, you know flight, super strength, that sort of thing. So she's not it's nothing really outside the norm, I guess Superman norm. But she's not as strong as Superman. I mean she's she's probably I don't know maybe 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 she's like a flying She Hulk. He's just wearing Raiders gear. Probably. Yeah, that's the type of stuff we did. A lot of lot of sports stuff. <laughs> Tattoos, but gold chains, yes. We did gold chains. We did all that rap stuff. Um, I know that the main competitor the company had was changing in them. All right, I'll let me try something else. Yeah, uh, uh, the tattoo, tattooed and gold chained uh, Tweety Bird from back in the nineties. So uh, he's mad that, that that trend ended. I'm sorry, John. We let you down, John. We let you down. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> hey, with a capital H, those t-shirts are the worst. Eh, they were popular at the time, so I don't know if they were the worst. People liked them. People were gobbling them up like candy. But I don't know if there's, I mean, I, I doubt if they're still being made nowadays. They're about 30 years out of date. Eh, 25 years, 25 years out of date. At the time, they were pretty, pretty cool, if you're into that. Do I want to do that? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take that out. Leave it. Makes it look too lean.
Club Romero Art says, uh, Stefana, Stefania Ferrario shares art based on her, so maybe you could tag her if you post this on Twitter or Instagram. Yeah, I'll tag her. Yeah. I shall tag her. I, I usually try to tag people who find when I do art based on them, so. How many people have responded so far when I did that? I think the only two people who responded. No. Well, the two people responded to my art. Um, one was the voice of Goku when I um, when I drew a picture of Goku, um, but I didn't tag him in that in that drawing. Um, he just happened to see it, which I thought was very cool. Uh, the only person who actually responded when I tagged them in art that I drew of them was uh, Billy Zane, um, which was extremely exciting for me I, because I. I don't know if you, if I haven't told you guys, Billy Zane remains my number one pick to play Lex Luthor in uh, in a Superman movie, and he has been for years. And I keep telling people every time they talk about Superman movie coming up, or uh, you know, uh, people playing playing Lex Luthor, um, I always say, just quit wasting time and call freaking Billy Zane. I mean, the guy. I mean, he, he was he was in he was in that TV series The Boys on on Amazon, so you know he's still working, you know you know he's not shy about doing comic related stuff if he's showing up in The Boys. So why I don't understand why Warner Brothers, DC, or whoever whoever these idiot directors are, why they haven't called Billy Zane yet to play. Uh, oh, cool! Oh, wow! She posted the ones that that you did. Oh, fantastic! That's very cool, Pablo. That's very exciting. Um, but yeah, Billy Zane, uh, he, he, he sent me a, I guess an email or a text or whatever, or he responded underneath the, the artwork saying that he, he liked the, uh, the portrait that I did of him. And, uh, yeah, I was like, oh man, cool. That was very exciting. Yeah, it's always, it's always nice whenever, whenever a subject of, uh, of your art um, responds positively to it. So. Billy Zane looks like a cool guy. Um, I don't know how cool he is in, in real life. I mean, but he he he, he plays cool characters. He he, he plays um, he plays charming psychopaths really well. Um, so that's why I always liked him as as Lex Luthor because Lex Luthor is someone who I mean he's a psychopath, but he he's extremely charming. He, he he's someone who is able to put on a, a great public face and make people think that that he has you know their best interests at heart you know the world's best interests at heart he's able to fool people very very well and um but underneath that he's 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 kind of a he's kind of a a nut he's kind of a, um and billy zane is really good at playing crazy and at playing charming um so you know and he looks just like him he looks just like lex luther um because Billy Zane, Billy Zane has been bald for years. He he was bald in Titanic, um, you know, back in when when did that come out? Two thousand or no, nineteen ninety eight or something. He was bald back then. He just wore a wig. So um, yeah, give Billy Zane a chance. Yes, uh, Nighthawk Warrior. You you missed um, you missed Billy Zane and Looney Tunes, and he's and yeah, I, I I understand your disappointment. I would be disappointed too if I missed those. <laughs> uh, 
1997. Okay, yeah. But yeah, he's been bald all that time. I think he was bald in The Phantom as well when he played that role. So, um, yeah. Like I said, he's my number one pick to play Lex Luthor. He would do. He, he would do a phenomenal job. I know it. Um, I mean, he would. Been, <laughs> I mean, when they when they picked uh, Jesse Eisenberg to play um, Lex Luthor, I, I wanted. To, I wanted. To, I wanted to kill someone. I wanted to kill whatever whatever casting agent made that decision. He deserved to be beaten. Um, I hate that movie. Too sad for me to watch. What, Titanic? It's too sad for you to watch? Wow. I was laughing during the movie. I didn't, I, I, I didn't like the movie when I saw it in theaters. I, I found it just laughable. I, fa I found the characters to be completely one-dimensional um, and sh shallow and kind of unlikable. Um, and then when, when the ship, ship actually started sinking... I was laughing because of how fake everything looked in terms of like the, the people floating in the water and they were like, you know, they were surrounded by uh, sort of like a sea of what to my eyes were like ob obviously, obviously styrofoam pieces of, piece of ice, pieces of ice. Instead of actual ice, they used styrofoam floating in the water. And I was watching, I was just like, this is ridiculous. This is bad. And, uh, and then when people start falling, I, I, the funniest part of the movie for me was when the ship was sinking, it splits in half, and then people start falling off the ship, and one guy like hits, hits the ship's propeller on the way down, and then bounces off and falls into the water. I, I literally cracked up laughing in the movie theater when that happened. So I probably wasn't the, uh, the target audience for, uh, for Titanic. <laughs> I, I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Diller says, laugh during Titanic. Talk about a psychopath. I'm sorry. I, fi I, find, I find bad movies funny to me. Um, especially when they're, when, when they're supposed to be serious movies, but it, it's not working. At least in my eyes, I start laughing at them. So. Should have seen me during... Uh, what was that movie? The um, Twilight. Because my uh, my my girlfriend now wife, <laughs> um, you know, had me take her to it, and I spent that whole movie laughing because it was so bad. That movie was terrible and sad. The saddest part was finding out that 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 jerky old lady had the diamond the entire time instead of giving it to these people who spent their lives looking for it and countless amounts of money searching for it she tosses it in the she tosses it in the ocean when they're all asleep that's the sad part of the movie i mean that that movie was oh it's so bad it was so bad they took a tragic event and they turned it into into a into uh, into a cheesy I don't know. It was it was bad. I don't know. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't don't agree, but I, I don't know. To my mind, it was bad. It was a bad movie. I hate Twilight movies. Well, I I agree. <laughs> Twilight movies are very bad. Didn't the band keep playing when while the ship was sinking? Apparently so. Um, so I don't know. It, 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 they did in the movie, but I don't know if they did that in real life. Ah, damn it! I keep hitting my camera. That's not good for uh, for the people watching. I felt bad for the scientists when that old hag threw through the jewels. So did I. So did I, Razmaz. That was that was, that was the, the tragic part of the whole film. That that's the tragedy. These people spent. So much time and effort trying to find this one jewel. She has it with her the entire time. Instead of helping them, seeing seeing how 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 badly they want to find this this treasure, she selfishly has kept to herself 
for decades. She just tosses it in 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 the deep, you know. Why? Out, out of out of love for some guy she she slept with. She, she had a one night stand with in the back of a of an old Ford, you know, in the in the in the bottom of the of the ship when uh you know when she's cheating on her fiance. I mean, the woman was a dirt bag. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what what I how I felt when I watched this movie. Um, it, it, I didn't like anyone in that movie, um, any of the characters rather, um, because to me they were all kind of unlikable jerks, very self-centered and very one one dimensional. You know, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was was sort of like the. Uh, the the rask the 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 poor down as luck rascally scamp who um who had the gumption to uh to to sneak on board and uh you know and 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 he stole the, the sort of the snobby rich girl from her from her evil fiance who uh, who hated puppies and and tied old ladies to railroad tracks and and he was only in it to he was only marrying her not for love because he wanted her money blah 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 um, or, or vice versa. She was only marrying him because of his money or something or other. Um, whatever. It was, ugh, it was cheesy. It was a cheesy film. Not good cheesy. It wasn't cheddar. It wasn't cheddar cheese. It was like really bad cheese, like Brie or, or Limburger. That's how cheesy it was. Um, yeah, I feel bad for ba- for Bill Paxton too. I mean, he died without ever finding that jewel, all because of that mean old lady. Um, how can anyone feel bad for Bill Paxton? It's her. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, stop it. It wasn't her. She stole it. It was not hers, John Diller. She stole it from Billy Zane. It was Billy Zane's diamond, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was. Or was it her family's? I can't remember. Regardless, she was mean. She was dying, and she figured, "I'm not gonna help them. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take it with me. I'm gonna toss it in the, toss it in in the Davy Jones locker with Jack. Jack will take good care of it." And she and she let Jack die. She let Leonardo DiCaprio die because there was plenty of room on that on that door when when she was floating it in the middle of uh, middle of the ocean in that freezing water, Jack's holding on to the door. Instead of moving over and letting him get on board too, so he could so he could at least not freeze in the water and drown, she just stays there. I'll never let you go, Jack. I'll never let you go. And then she lets him go and he drowns. What the heck is that? What da, da, da. Yeah. That woman that woman was a jerk when she was young and she was a bigger jerk when she was an old lady. Brie is delicious. You would say that, John Dillard. He gave it to her. It's hers. She, they weren't married. It was still his property. And then she stole it. And she saw that he was looking for her after, after the ship um, arrived, after, the, after, uh, after they were all saved. She saw him looking for her and she hid because she wanted to keep the diamond for herself. Selfish. So selfish. Terrible. Let's see. See, Nighthawk Warrior agrees with me. He says, yep. Or maybe he's agreeing with John Dillard. I don't know. <laughs> Only the Shadow knows. Right, Eagle 43? If he's still watching. Fun fact, Steven Spielberg has been to the site of the wrecked Titanic. 
this okay that's nice I mean when you say the site of the shipwreck tech I mean I'm sure a lot of people have been there or, or do you mean he's been underwater he's, he's gone underwater to to it that'd be cool um, oh more than anyone okay John Diller says who hurt who hurt you Jiminy um, that movie hurt me it hurt my brain having to sit through two hours of that schlock. Okay, he was in the sub. Oh, cool. That's awesome. That's very cool. I like that. The jewels were meant as an engagement gift to her. Jewel. Yeah, but she she didn't. She cheated on him. She cheated on him with uh with the Leonardo DiCaprio. So, to my mind, that ends the engagement. She no longer deserves that jewel. So she basically stole it from him. First she stole his heart, then she stole his jewel. Hundred fifty years later, still there underwater. Oh, the ship still sits at the bottom of the Arctic Ocean to this day, slowly falling apart more and more. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, well, they can't really get it. I mean, it's too, it's too, it's too far down. I mean, how are they going to bring it up? Yeah. It, besides, it's it's basically a it's a basically a grave site. I mean, you should just leave it. I mean, a century later. What's the what's the point of bringing it up? Let's see. What am I doing here? Um, no, she didn't have any rights to it. She's a thief. I mean, at least the uh, at least Bill Paxton and, and his friends got permits to look for it. She didn't get anything. She just stole it. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about being precise. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'll be precise on the top, but the rest of it, I'm just gonna eyeball it because, because, just because, just because. Let's see. Let's see, what, all right, let me try this again. There we go, that's better. Um, Jiminy has forgotten what it's like to be young and in love. No, I haven't forgotten. I mean, even when I was young, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be stealing multi-million dollar jewels from people and then sleeping with my fiance, sleeping with someone other than my fiance while my fiance is in the next room. You know, that's not, that's not young and in love. That's just being a scumbag. So, 
Rose gets no sympathy from me. <laughs> Sorry, John. Rose is just a no good two time in hussy. And a thief. Up here, and I'll do this but up, but up, like this. There we go. Ugh. Oh, come on. Billy Zane was the hero. <laughs> Says Pablo Romero art. That's hilarious. <laughs> Billy Zane was the hero. Oh, man. Uh, Nighthawk Warrior says, what are Bombshell's powers? Uh, she has super strength and she can fly. So I think those are, those are her main powers, I think. I don't know if she can shoot off energy blasts or anything. Um, we weren't informed yet last night during the, uh, during Joint Quartered, so. Hey, P Money, how you doing? Good seeing you. I was just watching Gary Shipman try to be a gamer channel. It was both funny and sad. How? How's now? I'm wondering how he how is he doing that? Um, I I know why he's doing it. He want because gamer channels have a lower threshold in order to um in order to um create that join button. You know, so so you can um so you can have memberships on your channel. So um, I know why he's doing it, but how is he? Um, does he have like a PlayStation hooked up to his computer, or is he playing games on his computer and not on his PlayStation or or Xbox? What is? I'm not sure exactly how, what he's doing. I'll have to check it out. Um, but that's cool. That's neat. It looked like a tablet. Now, how is he hooking up his tablet to his computer in order to stream that? I guess what my question would be. Think about it. The movie is the old lady telling her side of the story. Yeah, so she's probably lying because she's already a thief and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an adulterer or a cheater. So, you know, you can't trust her. You can't trust that old lady. You can't trust old Rose. Old Rose, old Rose lies. He's playing on his Nintendo Switch. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not familiar enough with Nintendo Switches to know how he's doing it. Maybe they have some sort of function on the Switch that allows you to stream. I don't know. My niece has one, but I don't. I, I've only I played with her on it, but I'm not familiar with the actual game game itself or the system and how it how it operates there might be a number of ways you can do it hmm. let me try one don't trust old ladies well you have to be you have to be careful of old ladies because uh, i mean always don't underestimate old people because they have nothing to lose that's the thing so you know an old lady will lie to your face because she knows even if she gets caught you know, what are they going to do to her? Give her life in prison? 
<laughs> you know, what's that? Two years? They don't care. You know, no lady will cut you, and she won't. She'll laugh about it. You know, whereas whereas young people, you know, they they have you know they they have a lot to lose. So, um, you know, there's there's usually usually some thought before they do something. And, you know, like an old person, you know, they'll 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 drive their car you know straight through a house and into a pool, and they'll say, ah, I'm old. What are you gonna do to me? And they'll get off. You know, nothing nothing's gonna happen to them because they're old. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Scott Schmier has a terrible headache. Well, I'm glad you're here, Scott. Scott Scott Schmier is the winner of last night's drawn and quarter when we were drawing this character. Scott Schmier won. He is he is the big winner from last night. So I am I want I am very happy that Scott won. But I'm also very I'm very sad and disappointed that I convinced Scott to go on because he ended up beating me and everyone else. So he's he's been fooling us all this time, telling us that he didn't know how to draw, and uh, or that he was he was shy and he didn't want to go on the fan edition. And the very first time he shows up, he ends up beating everyone. So <laughs> um, John Dillard says, "Old white people are free from repercussions." She had no reason to lie. Sure, she did. She wanted to see them suffer. That's why she lied. Yeah, she's she's. she's she, Rose is mean. I mean, she, you know, like I said, she's a cheater. She's a thief. And she more than likely is a liar as well. So I don't trust her. She's probably spent her whole life from 1912 until 1997 scamming people, going from town to town as a professional grifter, stealing, from, stealing people's life savings. I don't trust Rose. As far as I can throw her, woman's a crook. She's no good. Nighthawk Warrior is stroking his chin whiskers, saying, interesting, interesting. Yes, Eagle 43 says, Rosa Khan artist. She is, seriously. If you're ever playing Clue, the answer is Rose did it. Huh. For some reason, my straight edge is not giving me a straight edge. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna trust the the beginning and end points and assume that this is gonna be a straight line and won't look terrible. I'm trusting my ruler. I've had this ruler since college. This is a ruler that I used in college, actually. So it's been with me through thick and thin. My trusty ruler. All right, that looks, that looks pretty good. Looks okay. Mostly thin amber. Mostly thin. Oh, oh, am I right? Oh, am I right? Yeah. No, no. It's just. I mean, this this ruler is so cool. I love it. It still has my name on here from college, right there. I don't know if you can see it. J. Robinson. So other artists wouldn't steal it in school. <laughs> but um, but now this this thing is awesome. I love it. Every other ruler I've gotten since college, none of them have have been as good as this one. So Rose, Rose wouldn't steal it? Yeah, basically. Yeah, there are a lot of roses in, uh, in art school. Went to the University of Florida. I mean, it wasn't an art school, but, you know, when you're 
when you're in uh, when you're in class with a bunch of other people, you got to write your name on stuff or else it disappears. So a lot of roses wandering around looking looking for looking for great rulers to steal. She wasn't gonna get me, so I wrote my name on it. Um, let's see. Um, I want this. This is what I want. Actually, let me try. Let me try this one. <laughs> Rosa Connor is trying to sell off fake Titanic rugs to unsuspecting wealthy collectors. Yeah, that sounds like Rose, all right. I'm surprised she didn't have a copy of that of that um, diamond made and then pass that off as a real thing while she while she kept the real one. Actually, now that I think about it, the, the the diamond that she tossed in the ocean, that was probably a fake. More than likely. Hashtag don't trust Rose. What? Peter Fonda died? Oh, sheesh. Pablo Romero, art. I, um, that's terrible. He was a decent actor. Um, I mean, I've seen... I'm trying to think of the last thing I saw him in. I mean, probably the last thing I saw him in was uh, <laughs> Ghost Rider. But, um... Where he played Satan. But, I mean, I, I, I joined him in... I'm trying to remember the movies that I remember him from. Um, probably The Limey. I think that was, what, 1997, 1998? But, he, you know, he would show up every once in a while in various films. <laughs> John Diller said... <laughs> she was old. It fell. Oh, yeah, sure, it fell. I'll bet. Rose didn't do nothing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Rose has been saying that her whole life. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. Didn't do nothing. Mm. I want to know from you guys, do you guys want, is there anything you guys want to see me draw 
in these live streams? Is there anything in particular? Any th any thoughts you guys have in terms of what you want to see me do? Um, let me know. Uh, either now or in the comments if you're watching this later on. Um, just post it in the comments uh, in the stream or on this video. And let me know if there's anything in particular you guys want to see me draw. I have a list of people that I have, you know, that I plan on drawing. And, and it's, act it's actually like over a hundred people. Um, I mean, it's, prob it's probably half done by now. I mean, that, that I've drawn over, over the past year or so. But, um, you know, I'm always looking for new, new things to draw. So, new subjects. So, just let me know. Um, John Dillard says, she even whimpered when it slipped from her fragile fingers and said, oh, spare me. <laughs> Yawn. See, as a fellow geriatric, geriatric, I would know not to go over the, close to the edge of a ship with a multi-million dollar diamond in my hands, okay? I'd be smart enough to know that. And why wasn't her granddaughter watching her? I think her granddaughter was in on it. Draw Rosa Khan artist? No, I refuse to. I refuse to. I refuse to waste ink and and graphite on Rose the Con artist. I'll draw another Billy Zane. <laughs> Billy Zane deserves justice. Justice for Billy Zane. Hashtag. Okay, I think I'm done. I think I am done. This is... This is pretty much finished. And this is, uh, let's see, what else needs to be done on this? Eh. Maybe a few things. Maybe a few things, but not many. family was in on a Pablo. Uh, you should do a comic about the true story. <laughs> um, the granddaughter was taught from a from young age the ways of the con. Seriously. Family of grifters. With Billy Zane as a hero that he was. That's true. when you scan in artwork and then when the scan comes out you see all these pencil lines that you missed so I'm trying to so I don't have to spend half an hour cleaning this up in Photoshop afterwards I just want to erase all these lines <sighs> Okay. 
We probably saved a bunch of people there, but the old lady didn't tell that part. Yeah, probably. But she probably switched things around. So, so he looked like a villain. So you can't you can't trust anything Rose says. Actually, she she and Jack probably probably ganged up on poor Billy Zane while he was saving someone. They probably killed him and then stole a diamond from him. That's probably how it worked out. That's probably the truth. That's probably the true story behind Titanic. Yep, the whole story was a lie. One big con. She probably wasn't even on Titanic. She was probably just... Yeah. The whole thing was a one big lie. It's terrible. Oh my gosh. The biggest con was... James Cameron making that movie and fooling everyone into going to see it and spending their money on it. That was the biggest con of all. It should be a class action lawsuit against James Cameron and everyone who was in that movie. Except Billy Zane. Billy Zane was innocent. Billy Zane didn't, knew, didn't know what was going on. He was an innocent bystander. But everyone else, everyone else deserves to uh, be sued. Bonnie and Clyde of the Sea. That's it. They are. Seriously. You nailed it, Eagle 43. We need to write a story where the shadow finally catches up with them in the 30s. After after being on the land for two decades, they finally get their... Justice finally comes to them in the form of Lamont Cranston. That'd be awesome. Make it a... Make it a... Shadow Doc Savage team up story. All right, that is that's it. I think, I think that's it. Let me sign it. Let me sign it. Let me sign it. Scott Schmier says, nice, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you. All I have to do is work on being able to do something like this in two hours. <laughs> Instead of uh, how, long, how long I've been doing this. This is an extra, an additional two and a half hours from the initial two hours. So this took me four and a half hours to do. So if I can shrink that four and a half hours down to only two hours, I'll be I'll be much better off. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks. Thank you, Pablo, Pablo Romero and Eagle Forty Three. Glad you like it. All right. Where should I sign it? I'll sign it right. I guess on the side there.
There we go. 819. Scott Schmidt says, yeah, I worked on the rest of mine until 6 this morning. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard. Like, I mean, I, again, when I watch guys like uh, Mike Miller and uh, uh, any of those guys, you know, John Malin, uh, uh, Matthew Weldon, or what's this? Um, um, uh, Kanan White. I mean, they're able to do stuff that's better than this. I mean, way better than this. Um, in only two hours, it blows my mind. I mean, it just shows me how much, how much further I need to go to uh, to improve. So, yep. So I'll keep uh, I'll keep doing drawn and quartered and uh, and other stuff like that to help help train my brain, help train my muscles, help train my art muscles to be faster and uh, get better at it. So, so keep watching. Um, but uh, yeah. So I guess that's it. I won't I won't take up any more of your time. Um, but thank you everyone. There's eight people still watching. That's awesome. I'm gonna keep trying to do these live streams on a regular basis. Um, so I don't know about every day, but maybe close to every day. So um, you know, just uh, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for notifications so that they'll let you know when I do other live streams, future videos, and um, yeah. Uh, I'll just try to make more content, so I'll, 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 I'll have more practice to keep, you know, getting faster. So hopefully, um, you know, I'll just, I'll just get better. But anyway, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, again, as I said earlier, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna scan this, put it on, um, on Twitter, and uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in buying it, I'm gonna, I'll, you know, I'll offer it for, you know, sixty-five bucks for whoever wants it, if anyone's interested. So, um, you know, just check, uh, check Twitter. I'm on there. Um, all, all the links to all of my uh, social media is is in the about section of my channel here on YouTube. So just hit about, and uh, you know my my Twitter handle will be on there. My Instagram, my Facebook, and everything. So uh, yeah, just follow me on all those things, and uh, yeah, look for uh, look for Bombshell. She should be showing up sometime sometime tonight. So uh, again, everyone, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys later. And I'll probably see you somewhere on the interwebs sometime soon. Oh, yeah, they have Friday Night Auctions tonight. I'll probably show up there and uh, I'll be moderating for at least for a little while. So, anyway, you guys take care. Thanks again. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.